Well, here we are, the beginning of the end. Really, that's the name of the episode, and it's the start of the final season of the series. I'm a little sad to see it end, but it's had a good long run, and so long as it finishes strong, I'll be happy. I do think this episode indicates a good season to follow, though I have to say during the beginning of the episode, I was very disappointed. It makes sense for Celestia and Luna to name Twilight as their successor. I believe that was Lauren Faust's original idea for Twilight's ultimate journey, and it fits in fine. What I didn't like was how they went about it. Celestia and Luna basically just dumped the leadership of the country in Twilight's lap with no warning and without even asking her opinion. It's completely ridiculous, and if they had gone through with that plan, the country would have faced serious consequences. Because Twilight was right. She is not ready to rule. Yes, she can defend the country from enemies, and she's had some experience in diplomacy, but she knows nothing of the day-to-day -day business of actually running things. Look at how Celestia and Luna both struggled when they tried to do each other's jobs. Twilight doesn't know politics, or how to pass laws, or balance a federal budget, or anything like that. And suggesting that her friends will be a help to her is even more ridiculous, because they know even less of it than she does. Plus, running a country is a full-time job. Are they all supposed to give up their homes and businesses and careers in order to move to Canterlot and run the country? Also, this line of Luna's was worthy of a face-off. Equestria is currently enjoying its longest period of harmony in recent years. Since Twilight became a princess? <gasps> Celestia and Luna were kidnapped by evil vines that nearly strangled the Tree of Harmony. The Equestria games were nearly crashed by a skyborne glacier. Tyrak ate all the ponies' magic. A cult leader stole the main six's cutie marks and tried to brainwash them. The Grand Galloping Gala was flooded with magic-resistant ooze. The Grand Equestria Pony Summit was flooded by a neglected water main. Yak Yak Stan declared war on Equestria. The ponies of Equestria were nearly consumed by a living nightmare. The cult leader from before broke into Twilight's castle and used a stolen time travel spell to attempt to rewrite history, which created an alternate timeline in which pony civilization completely collapsed. The Crystal Empire was almost lost to a massive blizzard. All the princesses and element bearers were kidnapped and replaced by changelings. The Pony of Shadows was released from limbo. Equestria was invaded by the Storm King. Runaway students almost caused an international diplomatic catastrophe. Crystals tried to steal the elements of harmony, and a psychotic filly trapped Twilight and her friends in Tartarus and tried to drain all the magic from Equestria. <sighs> There's more, but those are the big ones. If that's Celestia and Luna's idea of a period of harmony, I don't want to know what they think a rough patch would be. However, these problems were only in the first five minutes of the episode. Shortly after, this happened. It was I. You may call me Grogar. It's Grogar! A while back I made a top 10 list of characters from the first generation that I wanted to see rebooted and Grogar was number 2 on the list! Gusty was also top of the list and they state here that she was the one to originally defeat him. And yes, I know they were name dropped in Flurry of Emotions, but name dropping doesn't count as appearing in the show. Also, I'm a little disappointed that they name dropped Gusty in this way since it makes it less likely that she'll actually make an appearance. Though, the Pillars came back after all that time, so who knows. I'm also a little confused about why they named Gusty as the one who defeated him. In the G1 episode, Galaxy and Paradise were the ones who figured out how to beat him, and Northstar was the one who actually did it. Name-dropping one of them would make more sense. But I'm getting really sidetracked. Back to the episode. From here on out, I really enjoyed myself watching this. I loved the fight scenes. I love the way they use Discord in the story. I love what they're setting up for future conflicts. I'm also glad about how Celestia and Luna changed their minds at the end with their plan for succession. It works so much better to simply name Twilight as their successor for some point in the future. I guess they'll probably end the series with her taking the throne, but if they just leave it with her as the official successor, I'd be happy with that. I'm definitely curious to see what the rest of the season has in store. I want to see how all the characters react to the events of the premiere. I don't think that the Tree of Harmony is really dead. We've seen that the tree's roots extend all the way under the school. 
Even if the tree is destroyed, the roots could still be alive. Since the young six have interacted with those roots, they may take the initiative to save what's left of the tree. I also expect that Chrysalis will make some move against Thorax and try to regain control of the Changeling Hive now that she has some other characters around to help her. Cozy Glow will probably be useful to Grogar as a spy and infiltrator among the ponies. She was well known at the school, but most ponies probably wouldn't know her by sight, and we've seen that she can be extremely persuasive and manipulative. We don't know exactly what Grogar's plans entail, but I really hope that we see him working throughout the season and that it's not all left until the finale. Overall, I was very pleased with this premiere, and I hope that it heralds a strong final season. I'm Calliope, and I can't wait to see what Friendship is Magic still has in store.